Hey, what's happening, guys? You recognize this? Yeah, I know. It's just a breadboard, right? The dirty one. This is the breadboard I used in my first videos five years ago. Still got it, and we're going to use it today. So, back then, we were using the Arduino IDE, like, I don't know, 1.6 or something like that. Well, no more of that. Now they are up to uh, IDE version 2.0 release candidate 3. And uh, we're going to take a look at that today. So what I'm doing here is just setting up a real simple Arduino no lid. So there's VCC. That guy goes to 5 volts. There's ground. And it goes to ground. Where's ground? Ground, right? Chair. Then we need our I squared C pins. A4 and A5. Hey, that's not 5 volts. That's A5. 5 volts is up here. Yeah, there we go. So A5. And A4, and since I can never remember which one is which, I have to go look. All right, so data is A4. Man. A4 is data. And SCO then would be A5. Good. Now we just need some power. Well, actually, we can just power it from the computer. So this is the Nano I just keep a OLED test program in. And if I did everything right and plugged everything in properly... There we go. So that's all good. Let's head over to the computer. What do you say? So here's where you need to go to find the IDE. And this is from uh, March 1st, 2021. So it's almost a year old. Not what you call an early adopter. But they say it is a uh, more advanced IDE. We have auto completion of variables. And functions according to library. See carrier dot begin button. Looks pretty good there. When clicking on a variable or function, a contextual menu will provide navigation shortcuts to jump to the line where they're declared. This kind of stuff I think is incredible because the biggest hurdle, in my opinion, of teaching new people to work with Arduino is the syntax. You make one tiny error and it crashes, and that's very disheartening to these people. Okay, here's another big feature, a live debugger that allows you to run your code interactively on a board and inspect its execution without writing zero. See, this is what I would do all the time. I put this in every one of my code so I could watch the variables and see if they were doing what I expected them to do. But now if we're going to have this and, and we can watch variables, man, that's incredible. As of today, the debugger supports all Arduino boards in the SAMD uh platform while well, I'm thinking this is not going to work on the Nano and the Arduino the 328P boards. Support for the embed platform is being implemented. It might take a while. I'm going to turn to a course with her. Yeah, so we're not going to get that. That's somewhat disappointing. Anyway, so you can click here on download it now. And it takes you over here, and this is the link. I'll, I'll put this link down below, arduino.cc slash en slash software pound experimental hyphen software. Pick your flavor and download it, which I have done. All right, here's my download. Let's see how big it is. 222 megabytes, so it's not very big. 
We will run this as an administrator and see what happens. All right, license agreement. We want to install it for. Where is it going? And we will see what happens. So we're watching this live just so you can see how long it's going to take. Hopefully it won't take too long. It looks like it's going to. I will, uh, I will block it or pause the video rather. Okay, it took just a little bit over a minute. Well, let's run it. See what happens. Still here. Don't worry. I gave it a minute, nothing happened, so let's try doing it ourselves, shall we? At least like we got a little rolly rolly. Okay. So shades of thinking. So here we are. The new improved Arduino IDE. No board select. Well, we're running a nano. Probably on COM6. Okay, let's see what that does. Tools, board info. So far, it looks good. So down here now, we have this entire uh, output thing. Interesting. So it picked up the last sketch we just ran, which is good. I like how everything's nice and color coded here. This is more visible than the last one. Let's uh let's change this text just so I can make sure that everything is working. And open save. Let's verify it. Down here, you can see it's showing us we're on line 30, column 37, TF8, compilation complete. All right, let's send it to the Arduino. Compilation complete. I'm going to look at the Arduino. I'm not going to bother. Huh. It did not change it. Can't even tell if it's trying to change it. I don't think it is. Processor. Oh, probably need the old bootloader. I forgot about that. Try it now. It doesn't seem to be uploading. Now I'm getting confused. Okay, I made no changes except to redo it, and it worked fine that time. So let's see what some of these tools that we have available are. Auto format, archive sketch, manage library, serial monitor, serial plotter. So you all know about the serial monitor, serial plotter. 
processor on. Burn bootloader. Okay. Yeah, looking good. Let me uh, go get a sensor and let's try and write something. Be right back. No. Yep. Trying to hide that so you can see it. So yeah, that worked out pretty well. All right, let's see what we got in the uh, main Arduino thingabob here. We got a microphone, capacitive sensor, DHT11, I think that's a whole other processor. The BMP280. Um, gyroscope. I can't think of what it's actually called. SGP30. I forget what that is. That's a current sensor. I think that's one of those either time of flight sensors or hand gesture sensors. I got so many, I, ca I cannot seriously remember what they are or what they do. Probably all screens. Yeah. What's this little guy? What are you, little guy? Oh, BMP 180. Yeah. DHT 11. Can't go wrong with the old DHT 11, can you? Well, if you can, we're certainly going to find out. So we got signal. Which one's ground? Which one's positive? All right, so. This one is marked S for signal, and then this should be VCC, and this one should be ground. So we can plug that guy in here. Oh, where are we going to plug him in? Where are we going to plug him in? <laughs> I guess we're going to plug him in right here because uh kind of running out of room there. So just so we don't mess things up, VCC. Yellow. We'll make ground white. Oh. No, that pin's no longer any good. Luckily, I say, I say luckily boy, I just happen to have another white one right here which we will use for our ground connection and then our signal we can run to just about any digital pin all right well, let's go back over to the computer see if we can put this all together all right so I assume we picked up the libraries here Let's see, file new. Hmm. That took a minute. I wonder what takes so long for them to load like that. All right, file, examples. Oh. Where are all my examples go? Okay, that was interesting. I don't know why I did that. All right, so we're looking for a DHT11. And I put it on pin 3. Now what I'm going to do is instead of running the... Um, serial we're going to send it to the OLED so please give me a moment while I make a couple changes okay
All right, so you saw how I changed that out. Hope I didn't miss anything. If we're going to find out here in a second. You can see down here the progress was being made. Looks like everything was good. We should be able to close this one. Final. Close that over. Are you not, babe? There. That's better. Now we can see everything. So as we're looking here, there's a couple things I notice. DHT pin, see how it does that because we have it up there. Like that. DHT type. Set up, see it tells you it's a function, it gives you the information on it. Same with the void. No. Nope. Variable DHT, class DHT, initialized DHT sensor. That's awesome, pretty cool. This is this is a lot of useful stuff that I wish they had before. All right, I'm going to plug up, plug up. I'm going to plug in the board. So we need to go on six. This is a nano on COM6. And tools, we need to make sure that we go to processor. We have old bootloader. And let's see if we can upload it. It's uploading. And what do we get? Yeah, she's working. All right, let's go over and look at it on the camera. Yeah, there it is. Oh, let me turn off the light. So yeah, there it is. And it's probably right on that humidity. It is low. But that was super easy to use. I didn't have any trouble at all installing it or understanding it or any of it. Do you need to upgrade? This is a release candidate. It's it's not the final version yet, but the final version will be out soon. So, I mean, if you like to experiment and you like to play, go ahead and download it. Can't hurt too much. Otherwise, yeah, wait till it comes out. It seems to be a worthwhile upgrade. I don't see anything drastic. Um, and if you're used to the old Arduino ID, you shouldn't have a problem either. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe. Big thanks to all the patrons. Big thanks to you guys for watching. That's it. I am out. Peace.